Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm Sunny Kuspa and today we are going to see one another data science project that is red wine quality prediction. So whatever data set we are going to use for this project is available on the Kaggle platform. I have provided the link of data set on top of this notebook. So you can check the data set. So this is the red wine quality data set and it has a lot of information when exactly it is collected and here you'll find like what are all features inside of this data set. So you can see there are total 12 features. So 11 are the input features and the 12th one that is a quality is kind of an output feature. Also on this data set, you will get some tips to work on or to do the data science project on this data set. Like uh, they are saying like when you are finding like uh, whatever the quality of your wine is equal to or greater than seven, then you can consider it as like a good quality wine. And if anything below seven, quality of the wine, you can consider it as like a bad wine or not a good wine. Okay, so let's go back and let's start working on our notebook. So we are going to see here the very basic data pre-processing. Okay, couple of and more we are going to focus on like, we will try to multiple machine learning algorithms on this same data set and we'll see like for multiple different kind of algorithms, what kind of performance or accuracy we are getting for prediction of the red wine quality. Okay. So let's get started. First of all, we are going to import the required library. So let me just import it. So here we are going to make use of a NumPy for numeric operation. For data visualization, we are using here Matplotly, Pandas for the data frame, handling our data frame, Seaborn again we are using for the data visualization. And here we have just added the filter warning. So it will ignore the if there are any warnings in the output. Okay. So let's move ahead and load the data set. So whatever data set I have shown on the Kaggle. So this same data set you can download from here. Okay, so you can just go this wine quality rate dot CSV. So you can download it and this CSV file will get downloaded on your system. And that same CSV files path you have to provide over here to load inside of our, uh, what we can say in the data frame. Okay, with the help of a pandas library. So here we are loading our data set and once data set is loaded, I'm just printing the random 25 records from our data set. Okay. So this wine.sample25 will pick any random 25 samples from our data set. So here you can see like we are able to load our data set. This is kind of a bit of structure of our data set. These are all the features and each uh, row is representing the one record or the observation related to the particular wine on the different 11 parameters and at the last we can see that the quality that is the target parameters so that is what we are going to predict we can also call it like our label so you can see like a different kind of quality like a quality of this wine record is six for this wine observation the quality is like a five okay now let's move ahead and let's try to see uh, some more information about this particular wine so let me just take this data frame and let's uh, run the info function on a data frame so it will provide us some more details like what exactly number of records are there so you can see like there are around 1599 observations inside of our data set and it has different kind of these many columns and each columns uh, what is its data type and number of uh, non-null values and number of null values okay so you can see like in all columns we don't have any null value okay so it is kind of a very good data set for the beginners like we can directly start working on it okay you can also see here like how much memory it is consuming so you can see like 150 kb memory it is consuming overall on our system to hold this all data set okay so it is a very a small size data set i would say okay so now let's go and uh, see like some statistical information about all the numeric columns which are available inside of our data set. Okay, so for that I'm just taking our data frame that is wine dot describe and it will provide us the all the statistical information. So here you can see like we are seeing here like each column which is numeric column available inside of our data set and for each column we are seeing like a number of records or number of values available inside of this column, what is the mean that is the average, what is the standard deviation, what is the minimum value inside of that particular column. Okay, so you can see for the fixed acidity we have minimum column, minimum value available is like a 4.6, the 25 percentile value is 7.1, 50 percentile, 75 percentile and a max. Okay, so this is a high level statistics we are getting from here. Now moving next, 
we have already checked but if you want to see like how many number of columns are there and in each column how many uh, null values are there so for that you can just simply run like wine uh, is null it will calculate like uh, simply let me just type like wine dot is null so it will check that is there are any null values inside of each column and if it is then just count those okay so i'll just say some and if i just run it so you can see like it has printed the all the columns inside of our data set that is all column names and number of null values inside of each column so you can see like it, we don't have any null value inside of any column or for any feature in our data set so this is a good data set so we can go ahead we don't need to deal on the null values now here again we can just uh, see the quality and average so let me just run it so from here you can uh, do some high level observations like if you can focus on the uh, volatile acidity so here you'll observe like uh, when the wine quality is low so volatile acidity is kind of uh, on an average it's a high okay and when uh, wine quality is very good in that case we can see here like a uh, velocity acidity is like a uh, too low okay so this kind of high level analysis we can do uh, by just grouping down the quality and finding the average values for the each uh, parameter now let's go and quickly do the some data analysis part so let me just uh, do the count plot so let's see like how many number of observations we have for each type of wine quality okay so you can see here like uh, we have different wine quality like a three four five six seven eight and majority of uh, observations in our data set those are belongs for the wine quality five and y qual wine quality six okay so i could see like around 1200 records are belongs to wine quality uh, which is having a five to six means it's an average wine quality we could say okay here we can also draw the box plot and see like uh, what are all outliers are available so i'm not able to see here so let's just plot it for in specific column so here we have fixed acidity column so let me just plot a box plot for that so you can see like uh, based on the interquartile method so you can see like this is a kind of average value for the fixed acidity that is around uh, eight and this is a upper quartile lower quartile and here you can see like this is the upper limit and lower limit so whatever beyond that we are seeing so these are all the outliers okay so as of now we are not going to handle outliers okay so because we are more going to focus in this episode on like a how we can apply multiple algorithms on this data set so i'm going to give some short homework for you guys related to these outliers okay so let's keep these outliers as it is you can see like for each feature we have some certain set of outliers over there you can check one by one by adding the different feature names over here and you will be able to draw the box plot it will tell you like uh, what are all possible outliers inside of your that particular feature let's plot a quick histogram okay so just to see like uh, with the bins of size 50 so we'll see like uh, how many what is the kind of a uh, record distribution so you can see like uh, this kind of histogram is getting plotted for the fixed acidity volatile acidity so you can see like uh, there are around 150 plus records are available for fixed acidity around like a 6.7.4 or something so this way you can just quickly do the observation on this data set so we are not going to focus much on the eda or the exploratory data analysis in this episode we are going to focus on the algorithm so let's quickly go and check our data set and talk about the feature selection okay so we are going to consider all features for our uh, modeling so i'm just taking the all features as it is so here you can see how many number of unique qualities we have so you can see like we have like a total output or target qualities like a five six seven four eight three okay so there are around six uh, unique wine qualities records we have in our data set okay so as per the tip which was provided on the kaggle so they were saying like if we are finding like wine quality which is uh, greater than six means equal to seven or higher then we can consider it as a good quality uh, otherwise we can consider it as a not good quality okay so let's uh, just make it like that so we are going to convert so rather than uh, having the six qualities we'll convert these six qualities into the two qualities like if the actual quality of the particular wine is greater than equal to seven then we consider it as a good quality we will mark it as a one and otherwise we will mark it as a zero for the or the wine records we have in our data set so let me just quickly run it and show you so now you can see like we have added one another column that is a good quality based on this quality column so this is our existing quality column and we have added one 13th feature or column 
which is if the quality of wine is uh, seven or more then it will consider as a good quality that is mark it as a one or label it as a one otherwise if the wine quality is uh, less than seven then it will mark it as like a uh, not a good quality wine okay so now we have added this good quality column over here now let's create our independent and dependent variable set okay so here you can see like inside of our data set so now these are all columns are like a our independent variable okay and based on that we are going to calculate our uh, the quality of a wine that is a dependent variable so anyhow we have replaced this uh, we can replace this quality column with a good quality column so we don't need this quality column anymore inside of our data set so anyhow we can drop it okay so here you can see like i am just uh, picking up all the independent columns okay so that i am just putting into the x variable so wine dot drop so i am dropping these two columns like a quality and good quality so rest all columns will be in my data and that would be called as my like a independent columns okay and other side for the dependent that is a target what i am trying to predict so that would be only one column that is a good quality that is i am going to take into the y variable so let me just try to run it if you want to see a data and values then we can just run it and you can see over here like inside of our data set so let me just put this cell above okay so when we converted our good quality data set so you can see like there are around 1382 records which are a bad quality uh, wines and in our data set there are 217 records which are showing like a good quality records okay so now let me just rerun this cell to separate our x and y independent and dependent variable let's print it and see so you can see like these are all columns are separated as a independent variable and this is our output that is a dependent variable okay so that is just telling us like whether wine is a good quality or not okay so that's all now we are good so we don't need to do the feature importance because we are not going to work on it okay but just if you want to see with the extra tree classifier you can just run it and you will see like uh, how much each uh, feature is contributing okay so you can see like uh, uh, we are just doing the comparison of all the features okay so all the features how it is actually contributing to the outcome that is the r y that is the quality of a wine so you can see here the feature importance like a column one is uh, contributing like point point seven percent and you can see that highest to the last column which is contributing like a 0.16 okay so that is a good uh, feature importance i would say so that is the uh, i guess last column is alcohol so value of alcohol has a more importance uh, in predicting the quality of particular wine okay so let's move ahead and let's split our data set into the train and test set so here we are making use of a escalance train test split and we are allocating the 30 percent data for the r test set and 70 percent rest we are using for our training purpose okay now let's start uh, modeling our data for the multiple machine learning algorithm so here we have like a created one result data frame where i am just storing the model name and the score generated by the each model okay so this is a simple data frame which is having the two columns so i'm going to add each um, algorithm's result or uh, models result inside of this data frame so last we can compare like which model is working better so now let's go and try with the logistic regression so you can see that this is the logistic regression algorithm we are using from the sklearn we have created the model and then we are fitting all our x train and y train to this model and once the model is trained we are going to predict it and whatever result we are getting we are going to calculate the accuracy score okay so we are here making use of accuracy score matrix from the sklearn and we are going to do the prediction and calculate the accuracy for against the whatever the we have predicted and what is the actual output okay and that accuracy score we are going to store as for this logistic regression okay so you can see this is the result uh, set i have created and inside of that i am going to push all this result and will print it okay so let me just try to run it the same process we are going to follow for the all the below algorithm so let me just try to run it and you can see here like for logistic regression algorithm of uh, in a for our wine quality prediction data set it is giving us like around 87 percent accuracy okay so 0.87 means it is 87 percent okay now let me just try to run same way like a knn algorithm so let's quickly run it and for knn we are getting like a 0.87 uh, percent accuracy it is almost same like a, what is the logistic regression 
uh, accuracy. Now let me just run with a support vector classifier and support vector classifier we are getting accuracy like 86 percent which is a bit less than logistic regression and k neighbor, nearest neighbor. So we are using the same data set and we are trying to apply the different machine learning algorithm. For decision tree we are getting again 86.45 percent so that is also low compared to the logistic regression and KNN classifier. Now let's try with a Gaussian NB algorithm. So let me just try to run it. And for that, we are getting a lower accuracy compared to the other algorithm. We are getting here like 83% only. Okay. Let's try with the next random forest and XGBoost. So let me just try random forest. We are getting 89% accuracy. So that is a too high compared to the other. So let me now go and run the XGBoost. And for XG boost, we are also getting high accuracy. That is 89.16. So that is also good accuracy. These are all the accuracies we are getting. So let me just sort this score. Sorted all the results in the descending order. And we can see that for random forest classifier, we are getting an accuracy 0.89%. Okay, 89.37. For XG boost classifier also, we are getting around 89%. 0.1 so which is a bit lesser than the random forest classifier similar way we can see for the each okay so here looking at the these stats we can consider random forest classifier or xgboost classifier for our modeling okay and uh, one last time when uh, youtube viewer were asked like how i can decide like which model is a good one okay so this is the one way where you can try with the different models and you can see like which one is giving you the good accuracy. Okay. And based on that, you can consider this algorithm and later on you can, if you want, you can optimize the hyperparameters and work on that particular algorithm. But I would say when you are working on any classification problem, don't just go on the accuracy. You just try with the other metrics like a F1 score and uh, precision recall and then see like uh, which one is uh, on an average working better because just looking at accuracy had some problems that i'm going to uh, discuss in the further episodes where i'll talk about the different metrics and what is the issue when we are just working or the considering the accuracy as a metrics okay so now coming back to this episode so this way you can just uh, predict the red wine quality just by using a different machine learning algorithm so this is the simple episodes Gradually, as we go ahead, I'll just keep increasing the complexity of the, our project so you can learn new things in a, each episode. Okay, so that's all for today. For today, I'm going to give you homework like uh, here you can see like we have uh, actually just checked for the outliers. Okay, but we have not removed these outliers. So I want you to remove this outlier with any outlier detection technique, detect it and remove those outliers. And then try to apply all these algorithms and see like what kind of accuracy you are getting, whether you are getting an improved accuracy or what. You can check it and let me know into the comment box. Okay, so that's all for today. Hope you liked today's episode. If yes, then please hit on the like button. Subscribe to this channel to learn more about data science and machine learning. If you have any questions or doubt, then just let me know into the comment box. I'll get back to you. Stay safe, stay happy. See you in the next episode. Until then, bye-bye.